couple things. First things first, you guys see my T-shirt, obviously. Uh, this is for the NFL's crucial catch. You'll see players, coaches, um, a lot of guys wearing these shirts uh, pregame, uh, honoring whoever it is they feel like honoring that uh, had battle with cancer and the different types of colors correspond to the to the type of cancer. So uh, this is my aunt. This is Kathleen. Uh, Gian is her name. She's my dad's sister. Uh, she had um, a type of leukemia. She has since beat it. Um, so she's doing great, but just a cool opportunity to honor her and her battle that she went through with it. So that's why I have the shirt on. Um, you'll see a lot of guys have them on, on Sunday. Uh, as far as roster moves go today, um, you'll, ha you'll see Legarius. Uh, Legarius, Jeff, and um, Hop will have their rest days today. That'll come up as on the injury report. And then um, uh, we signed, um, we cut John Joku off the active. Uh, we will be signing him back to the practice squad. Uh, we'll elevate um, Leroy Watson uh, to come get his com competition at uh, right tackle. Uh, we also signed Trevor Simeon um, today, currently to the practice squad, um, just to have another veteran quarterback. Um, just have some learn this week and have some familiarity. So uh, if we needed him for the emergency third on game day, uh, we could potentially use him. So just with a, with a quarterback dealing with an injury, it was the, the smart thing for us to do as an insurance policy to have Trevor uh, come in and get some familiarity with, uh, with our offense. Um, other than that, I think that's it for as far as injuries go that are, that are in roster moves that are updated. So uh, with that, I'll let you guys go ahead. This is Trevi, uh, the Simeon move. Indicate anything about, about Will's status? Or no, or? it was more um, looking at the, you know, he goes out of the game. We got one quarterback that can play. Um, so just getting a guy in that can at least have some familiarity um, as an insurance to have a, have a third quarterback in that's a veteran guy. I know I've, I have said before that I'd prefer a younger one. I, I would uh, for developmental purposes, but this is a different situation. This is more of a uh, making sure we have someone that could be ready if, if we need them. So that's sort of where we're at with uh, – a full go today, or do you expect to have to limit him? I do. I, I think he'll be close to full. Um, we may limit him a little bit just because. Um, but, but again, we'll see. He's, he's going to go out and throw, and we're going to see how he feels and how uh, his body responds. So um, intent is for him to, to practice, and he'll practice as much as he can tolerate and uh, hopefully uh, feel pretty good. But again, we'll, we'll see. There'll be no um, – we'll probably list him as limited on the injury report, just so you guys are aware. Been with Simeon a couple of times before, is that right? Two different times, yeah. Okay. I was with uh, Trevor when we drafted him in the seventh round uh, in Denver. Um, I left that year in 2015. He ended up starting the next season in 16. And then we had him in camp, um, off season in camp last year in Cincinnati, uh, competing for that backup spot. So um, been around a lot, seen a lot of football, has a lot of offenses in his brain, I'm sure. But um, I know Trevor well, and, and I trust him. And uh, if you know, for a guy to come in and pick it up, he's, he's up to that task. I was looking for Jeffrey. I expect him to be out there today. Uh, he'll rest today. It's his normal Wednesday rest day. But um, I do, I do feel, um, I feel positive about where he's at. Again, he's he's a he's a will see still at this point, but uh, feel good about him um, today. How's uh, Leroy done? Kind of developing under your watch since he got here in April. Yeah, he's done a nice job. He's, you know, he's he's still a young player, uh, even though he's you know he's been been in the league for a little bit, but. Um, he's going to get a chance to compete and uh, to see what he's got. And I think that's the, the right move for, for our offensive line and for our team is to uh, see, what, see what he has and what he can help us, uh, where he can help us. And uh, he's done a nice job. He's obviously familiar with the little bit of the system uh, to some degree with the time in Cleveland. But, um, yeah, it's just an opportunity for him, and, uh, and we'll see what he does with it. Is that a split reps situation this week? <laughs> Yeah, as best we can. I mean, it'll be we'll, they'll both work, um, and we'll see where see where we end at the end of the week. Is there anything you say to Will about playing through pain, being smart through pain? I know you've had quarterbacks deal with that before. Just mm -hmm. what are the best practices? Um, I just ask him to be honest and be smart, and ultimately, uh, as long as he feels like he can go do his job as an NFL quarterback, and that's make all the throws and be able to take hits and all those things, and feel good enough that that your level of play is not going to dip because of it. Um, then, then let's roll. Uh, but if at any point you feel like you can't do something that's going to ultimately hurt him or hurt our team um, because you can't function in the same level or same manner that you're used to, um, that's when you have to be smart about it. And that's for me to make the decision at the end of the day. But um, I do trust that he's, he'll be honest and, and give us the right feedback uh, on how he feels and how his body feels. Um, 
by the time we get ready to kick off on Sunday. So uh, it's an important, open and honest conversation that he had, that him and I have together um, about how he feels and how effective he feels he can be. And the minute you can't, you don't feel like you can be effective enough to, to help the team win, then um, that's when you have to make a decision uh, to go with somebody else. And that's, that, that, that's every position across the board. But uh, certainly for the quarterback, if you can't perform the requisite skills at the level necessary, then uh, you're, kinda, you're, you're putting us at a disadvantage. So. That's the best way to answer it. The thing that had a lot of people excited about Will last year, administratively, coaching-wise here, was were the occasional brilliant throws. No doubt. <clears throat> and I, that's, I guess you talk about some of those on tape when, when you arrive. Yep. Outside of maybe the 40-yard touchdown against the Jets that he snuck between two defenders, how many of those kinds of throws do you feel like he's made this season? Um, probably, I mean, again, short, small sample size too, but, um, I think he made a couple, I think made a few more over the course of the season last year. Um, and we'll keep trying to find places for him to make those. You know, I thought that, uh, the throw that got intercepted to the, against the jets was a, was an ag aggressive throw that you'd like to, had you come down with it, you feel pretty good about. He made a really nice throw to Calvin on a bench route in that game too, late, uh, late in the game. Um, beautiful timing and anticipation, accuracy. Um, and he's thrown a couple other balls that may not be as exciting as some, but are still really, really good throws. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're still trying to find ways to unlock that, too, try to get more balls uh, down the field, a little more explosive when we can. Um, but, yeah, those are the things that makes Will an exciting player and got to keep finding ways to, to let him do that. Why, why, why do you think coming into a, a situation with a, an offensive coach and, and that's your, your M.O. with mm -hmm. the with – Quarterback and all the guys you've been to, we would have expected those to have shown up more often, not less. Yeah, I think there's a lot of factors that go into it. The the biggest one probably is that um, our opportunities have been limited in some senses, especially with the turnovers um, and the protection of them. I mean, some of those throws require uh, some time, and, and we have not probably done a good enough job in that realm uh, to provide some of the time necessary to make those. Um, and then some of it's just me calling more plays that allow him to do that too. So that's it, there's there's a lot of factors that go in. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we can continue to, to unlock that stuff as we keep moving forward. Along those lines, in terms of his development and those types of things, is it possible that the league has a, has now seen him and has kind of adjusted to try and take away his strengths and now it's on him and you to try to readjust to open some different things up? Yeah, that's that's the cat and mouse game and uh, every year you know they you know defenses are pretty determined to stop explosive plays and not let those types of throws um, be had and there's a patience involved in some of it too and no one want to check the ball down um, so yeah there's it's it's all of those things together um, and we got to adapt and adjust when those things aren't there um, a lot of things that I can help with uh, in that regard and then um you know, it's, it's the patience part of it that those things come. And when you start hunting those plays too much, you, you, you put yourself in position to make some mistakes too. So, uh, again, I think it's it's all of those things. There's no one singular answer to that. Um, all of it has a, a part uh, in, in the process. You can't speak for him, but when you have a quarterback that's talking about rewiring his thought process, <laughs> getting that time to sit back and watch the game and then having this time off, is there something that, that can be gained for that? Can that – you know, help the game kind of slow down? Can he, can he benefit from the rest? Uh, yeah, there's always time to benefit. Um, you can always gain something from observing. Um, I'm still a big advocate of, of learning by doing. Um, I think quarterbacks, they, there's no substitute for experience. There's no, um, there's no better way to learn than, you know, some failure as well. I mean, there, you got to learn those lessons. And um, I think that that's how you get better fast. But certainly there's a, there's a time and a place where you can learn um, by watching, by watching others, um, by stepping back out of the out of the intensity of it, sometimes there's uh, there's things to be gained from that. But uh, I'll always I'll always probably stand on the table for for quarterbacks needing to experience and play uh, to learn the to learn the lessons they need to learn. There's no there's no other way you can simulate it um, or teach it other than letting guys play. As you guys sort of self scattered and I guess evaluated the last couple of weeks. Were there were there any things like systematically or scheme wise that that you felt you could do to, to help Will to aid Will? Um, yeah, there's definitely things that we, we felt we could we could do do more of, do better, do less of some of the things that maybe we hadn't uh, hadn't had as much success. So, yeah, there's there I, I felt good coming out of the bye about some of the things that we can do 
to help schematically um, in, in, in the run game and the pass game and the protection game. I think I've I got a pretty good grasp, I think, of what I can do to help that process. And I think that's important for me. And then, um, you know, I'm going to go out and do it. Wiring point. Are there specific areas where you've seen that happen? Is it too small of a sample size to say, or can you give us concrete areas where he's changed? Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at if you look at his, I think the when he's com he's completed the ball at a pretty good rate, which is part of playing the position. Um, he's been really pretty patient. I, I've called a handful of play action plays that. Um, didn't necessarily have the shot down the field we were hoping for, and he did a really good job of quickly finding the check down and, and moving us on to the next play. And those that's a there, that's a maturity process of playing quarterback. Um, those things I've been I've been encouraged with uh, in the early part of the season, um, and now there's a there's a you never want to take the aggressiveness away from the quarterback, and I think that that's the the fine line is you want to be aggressive. You got to toe the line a little bit. There's there's part of playing quarterback um, that's in Will's DNA of you know, there's a little bit of effort. You know, like uh, you know, I'll, I'll sure I'll dive for the I'll, I'll dive for the first down. I'll throw the ball into that coverage. Uh, so you got to have that balance, but you have to have that. Um, you don't ever want to get to a point where a quarterback that's aggressive in nature has to feel like he has to dial it back. Um, so there's a you, you work through that process, and uh, I think with, he's done a good job of that. He's completed the balls when when asked, um, and then again, that's kind of to Paul's question about the the aggressiveness and the balls down the field and the kind of the Moments of brilliance that he's had um, in his in his 13 starts. Um, that's just finding the finding the balance of when to do it and how to make sure we're helping the team while still being aggressive. So yeah, there's uh, it's a it's a very fine line you walk. Yeah, another week where some uncertainty about the opposing team's quarterback. Mm -hmm. How are they different with Flacco and Richardson, and maybe what's the challenge uh, with each one? Um, yeah, I, I mean, you, you the challenge with, with Flacco is 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 his veteranness. Um, He's he is not afraid to throw the ball down the field. Um, they they go hunting up for some shots as much as possible. He's he's certainly uh, capable. I think he's one of the better deep ball throwers in football in general. Always has been. Uh, so that part you you have to manage. Um, he can he may he may not be able to move like Richardson can, but he doesn't need to because he you know he knows where to go with the ball. Um, and he ends up finding completions. Whereas Richardson, you just see the immense talent. I mean he he's. The throws that he's put on tape are, are pretty remarkable. Um, his ability to put the ball in his hand is a totally different dynamic um, as a runner. And you sort of have to treat the two quarterbacks in a different manner with your rush packages and how you rush the quarterback and you know all those things that go into the different styles. But yeah, there there couldn't be like more polar opposite styles you're getting ready for than than Joe and, and Anthony. And and they both have um, you know they, they're all capable of beating you and they're all. They have, they have talent. They're just very different styles, and uh, it's a challenge. Do you feel like, whether it's coaches or players, they're a little bit more relaxed now that you kind of got the proverbial monkey off your back with the first win of the season? I hope not. Um, uh, I hope I hope we're still hungry as ever. I hope we still feel like we haven't won a game. Um, there's an edge that, that we played with on Monday night that I thought was um, really positive. Um, our focus was outstanding, and uh, you never want to – you never want to relax. Um, sure, I think it feels good that we've gotten, you know, you're not over. That certainly feels good. But uh, I liked what our team was last week. I like how we played. Um, and look, we, you know, I told our team in our team meeting after the game, we, we've won one game. And um, I'd like to win a lot more than one. And, and I think that uh, any, any feeling of relaxing, any feeling of that we've arrived is, is obviously incredibly premature. And I, and I don't mean that's with the question that you asked, but um, I just I like the edge our team plays with when uh, our back's up against the wall a bit, and I hope it stays that way. What, um, oh, one. When you look at, the, at Ridley's numbers for the last couple of weeks, what are some reasons that factor into, into those kind of numbers? Uh, well, the Miami game was the amount of runs that we had in the game. Um, Sort of take that game in and of itself, um, but yeah, there's I got to do a better job of, of finding ways to um, to get Calvin the ball. Uh, need to use his speed and explosiveness more. Um, just get it in his hands every which way we can, and that's you know again that's that's on me to get him in those spots where he can get the ball more and uh, let Will play football. But um, need need to find a way to get him get him going. I told him that this morning too. Just hey man, gotta gotta find a way to get you going and just be patient. We'll, we'll get it to you. Um, but he's great. He's he's a team he's a team player. He just wants to win. Um, but you know, like all those guys, they want they want their part of the action and want to be able to help. Um, so that's how that's 
mostly on me to get find ways to give him the ball. Do you have concerns about guys like that coming in after a big contract and, and maybe pressing it all? No, nope. And, I, and those are the things that you you know you have the relationship and the conversation with him about it. Just uh, just like I told him, he doesn't need to press. Um, it's on me to find ways to get it to him. Just keep keep playing football and and the ball come your way. Because anytime you start trying to do too much or go out of your way or, or press to try to make plays, usually the negative things happen. So uh, let, let the game come to you and, and let the ball come to you, and it will. Um, same thing I told Hop early on, too. It's the same process that you know, we got to keep finding ways to get you involved, keep you involved, and, uh, and and don't don't trust me. It's on my mind. I'm trying to do the best I can to get it to you. So just let it come to you, and, and we'll keep we'll keep rolling. It's good to get back out there, feel it out. And uh, yeah, I was felt good about where I'm at. No. Tolerance or what's your what's your outlook? Yeah, I, just, I mean it's ability. Just if I'm able to do everything that's going to be asked of me on Sunday. So got through today, felt it out, and I'm just going to see how it goes throughout the week. You're confident that at this point anyway that, that you will be able to do just about everything, or is that TBD? Oh uh, yeah, hope so. Hope so. Feel good right now, and we just got to see how the rest of the week goes. Depends on how tomorrow feels, maybe from the workload today. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Obviously, this is my first time throwing since coming back from it. I uh, expect to be a little sore, but I'm going to have to probably just work through it and just see where I'm at tomorrow. Put a 1 to 10 on where the paint is right now, or is it hard to do? Uh, it's hard right now, but um, yeah, it's hard to put a number to it. Well, what did you feel like the bye week did for you just to maybe re-look back at some things? And obviously, you've got the rest on your body, but more just to uh, kind of assess your play up to this point. Yeah, I mean, just looking through what I did good, what I didn't do so good, and how I can improve for my team going forward. But it gave me a lot of confidence. I saw saw a lot of good on there, and it's easy to dwell on the you know bad things that show up on the tape. But um, it's good to remember the type of player that you are and the ability and potential that you have when you see those good things. Back and just kind of remove yourself from everything. Does that like, help you as far as the process of rewiring and just resetting? Uh, for sure. I mean, just to be out of here for 48 hours, uh, it felt felt cool to just decompress and not think about football for a couple of days. Was able to be with my family for a couple of days. So that was really nice. And uh, we know it's a long ride the rest of the season, so we had to take advantage of that time while we did. Um, and I'm glad I did. In terms of your self evaluation of what you that did over the first few games of the year. How much of it is kind of the give and take that now there's enough film on you that defenses now see what they want to try to stop you from doing, and now it's your, upon you to try to readjust and to you know, counter that? Yeah, I don't think it's so much of self-scouting and trying to change the way I play. I'm not in a position to do that right now. I just got to make sure I'm doing the right things and doing what's, what's asked of me and listening to the coaching and trusting my eyes and uh, playing on time and just being efficient for my team, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably not going to be till maybe later in the season or I don't know exactly when, but it might get to that point where there's some self-scouting done in terms of uh, tendencies and how we've seen teams attack us, um, maybe their second time around playing us or something, but it is interesting, like after X amount of starts for starting quarterbacks, teams might have a feel for them and start playing them a certain way, and it'll be interesting to see what I think or what we think that style of defensive play is for me. Ryan does think there's some value in, I guess, scoreboard watching, for lack of a better term, looking around the league. Do you find it helpful to look around what's going on around the league and realize that you guys are still in the thick of it here? For sure. Yeah, for starters, I mean, it was just cool being able to be on the couch for an NFL weekend and a college football weekend just to watch all those crazy games. So that was fun uh, as a fan. And then also, uh, yeah, no, we're obviously just focused mostly on what's going on here, but. Um, we know that there's a uh, chance for second place in our division for a win on Sunday. So that's uh, to be one and three and to, to have that feeling and just knowing that there's a whole lot of you know football in front of us, but that even right now it's it's kind of op it's open for us. Uh, it's cool to see that and keep that as uh, in the back of our mind. Will you know turn the by and so forth? Did you talk about maybe making any adjustments in the scheme or system or anything like that in order to, to, to help you out? Yeah, no, we just we looked at self scouting tendency things that from a personnel or formation or down distance uh, tendency what we do um, not so much on me our conversations were more so based on how I was feeling and my ability to get out here and play this week but um, no we definitely found some things as an offense even though it is only based off of four games um, that we think we can help ourselves out with and not give them as much of a uh, advantage you 
really uh, elite wild throws last year. Brian talked about those coming in as one of the things that made you an attractive guy to inherit. Seems like fewer of those this year. Where, where do you think they are? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like I've had a couple good ones out there, but I feel like at the end of the day, I'm just doing or taking the throws that I have uh, available to me. And I could argue that some of those throws were, were not necessary last year. And I, maybe I had an opportunity to make those dangerous throws this year that I haven't. Um, I feel like that's one of the areas I've improved on the most is just not throwing it into you know just team meetings and just cloudy windows. Um, uh, and then I would just say I would, you know, I felt like I was throwing the ball the best that I ever was in my entire career. So uh, as of last week, so it, it, it wasn't like an ability thing where I feel like I didn't have it anymore. I just feel like the opportunities haven't presented itself, but I know I got it in me. And I know that they'll come. Like seeing this team get their first win without you out there, seeing them break the 30-point streak without you out there, human nature, I would imagine, is like press a little bit. But how do you process it? Like, how do you respond to that, and how do you plan to bounce back? Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, obviously, I was ecstatic for us to get that win. But it's like, the. I mean, no matter, or I guess if you have a certain sense of competitiveness in you, like, you you feel that like guiltiness. Like, why do I feel like? I wasn't as part as much of a part of that win as I, as I you know would have wished that I was. Um, so it was tough dealing with that for like a day, but um, just you know flipping the page, getting ready. Obviously with an injury to deal with now, just focusing on that. Um, but being able to roll from that last win, and you know like Coach said, we're not relieved. We're not you know all of a sudden since we have a good win, we're not going to take our foot off the pedal. Like we we know what we got in front of us. It's a long road to go, and we just got to keep going. It's important, obviously, but this is the divisional game. You guys won't have another one for about six weeks after. How important was it for you to be ready for this game? Really, I mean, really, I'm, are you saying physically, sorry? Like, yeah. Yeah, hey, uh, it's, it's very important. Um, and it's one of those push and pull things where I'm a competitor. I'm going to push myself to play uh, in whatever you know, state that I'm in. Um, and it's going to hard, be hard for you know, myself to take myself out. But I've got to be smart throughout the week and feel it out, see how I feel, not put myself and my team in jeopardy. Um, but you know, I'm fighting like hell to get out there on Sunday. When you're not 100% physically, does that force you to have to be even sharper mentally and in terms of preparation? Uh, yeah, no, I think it's just knowing the couple things that you might not be able to do that you were be able to do beforehand, and then knowing when you're put in those situations, how are you going to respond now? Um, so it's obviously going to be protecting my body, and making sure, you know, even the little things like if I need to fall down, trying to fall down on my left side and, and protecting my right shoulder, but. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there's, it's definitely an opportunity to just lock in on the mental side of things, making sure that the decisions I'm making are the, are the right ones. And because um, I know I'm not going to be wanting to putting my body in as much risk as I was before with getting out of the pocket or doing other things. But just going to trust my eyes and trust that I do what's uh, you know best for me and the team. And hopefully my body feels good to where I, I don't even have to think about those things. Have you ever dealt with the shoulder injury before during the course of your playing career? And I got you... this one, oh, yeah. the same thing, but on that side. Yeah. But no, I just got that one. But uh, never on my right side. That one left the scar. So uh, yeah, I just it's, this is a little bit worse than what this was. But the AC sprain. This is a little bit worse. But yeah, it's just a. I guess you could get surgery, but it's more cosmetic than anything. But uh, yeah, it sucks. Anytime you get an injury, but especially when it's to a body part that's so crucial to your career, your life, and what you do, it's scary and. Um, I'm glad that I came off the field with a diagnosis that wasn't as bad as it could have been, and I'm working through it to make sure that I can get back to where I was. Is that the kind of thing that could, could lead to surgery in the offseason? Well, uh, not that I've been told. No. And did you think you had the first down on that play? I definitely had the first down, but uh, <laughs> the, I came off the field. I, was, I would have asked to challenge it, but I was like, my hurts. I don't know if I can go back out there. I don't know if, yeah. But, um, yeah, excuse me. When, you're, when, you're when I was coming out. off the field, I think like in the moment I was like adrenaline, like I was more worried about getting the first down. And and I and I, when I landed, I definitely like felt something. Didn't think it was really nothing. And then as I was working it out, I realized that there's something wrong. Stress oh, more being good in, in play action. That's one of the teams done well. Are you more comfortable with that, or is it just delaying those guys in their coverage for that split second that opens it up for you? There are a whole bunch of reasons why we think play action is going to be good for us. It's how it marries to the run game. Um, how we feel like we can hold up in protection, how I feel like I am coming off of fakes and playing on timing. Uh, we, we feel like it, we are just a good group for that, and uh, we got to make sure that we use it effectively and that we marry it well so that we can keep the defense guessing. But 
it's always been a big part of this system, and we're going to make sure it continues to grow. When you are watching football on a weekend like this that you're off, what are you watching? Are you watching other quarterbacks to try and see what they're doing, or are you watching the games just for the fun of it? Just what is that experience? <laughs> uh, it's mostly just watching as many games as I can. Like I want to, I'm like sensory overload, like getting every single you know, red zone or whatever. But like you said, you know, watching the quarterbacks, how they operate the games, and then it's also like, oh, they just ran whatever play we have in our playbook. And it's hard not to watch a game and not like call out the plays as they're happening. Um, so that's fun. Um, but I think it's, it's when I'm watching film, like I'll definitely watch it more intently, but I'm still a fan of the game. You know, I like just watching it as uh, more casually too. So I, I think I was more in that state this weekend. You say you're calling out plays as it happens. Do you think you're a fun person to watch games <laughs> with because of that? Well, I think it actually just came up because this past weekend I like made a comment um, and my sister was like, that's crazy, like, what's this one called or whatever, and we just started going through it. But um, it is something, like, in my head, like, what if I had that rep, you know? What if I had that rep versus the, that look, and based on what that quarterback did, like, oh, yeah, I would have done the same thing, or maybe I would have moved on or taken that one earlier. Um, so it's, it's hard not to watch, the, or to watch those games and not uh, critique or just, to, like, look inside as to how we could have handled it. Did she find that enjoyable, or did she come to regret it? No, she thought it was cool. She thought it was cool. I, uh, yeah, I think... There's been a lot of people in my life that I've turned to to help me with uh, studying, and it kind of takes a little bit for them to understand the language and how to spit out the call sheet for, as I repeat it to them. But, um, yeah, it's anytime I can talk about football and someone's open to it, I'm, I'm all for it. Did you see Jordan Love's interception? And, and seeing that, did that make you not beat up on yourself so much? <laughs> There's a couple uh, examples that coaches told me that have made me feel a little bit better about myself. I think you said... Tom Brady in the AFC Championship threw an identical pick to what I did to Von Miller to a dropping defensive end. Like, those things happen. Like, things where the vision's not there, someone's in front of you, you don't really see what's going on. And then again, uh, he sent me a clip last night of Burrow trying to throw it away like this on the sideline and it getting picked in his rookie year or something. And he's like, yeah, he turned out to be pretty good. So um, that, was, that was just funny to see those things and knowing it happens to everybody. Warner uh, had all these come to your uh, defense a couple times on, on Twitter for the for the picks. I was wondering if you had any kind of communication. Uh, no, I haven't. I didn't know that, but that's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. He's done multiple. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, I mean that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I not to like defend myself, but I, those a couple of those picks have just been like happening things that have just been weird, and um, I'd be a lot, lot harder on myself if I was forcing balls into coverage and having making mistakes in that way. That one in Miami, we, you, we saw on the broadcast you out. I didn't see the guy. Mm -hmm. Is it that you literally did not see him, or is it that you just you read it and automatically did it, and by the time it yeah. got out of your hands? I knew he dropped. I knew Jalen came. We didn't have the protection set, and I knew when they brought the nickel that our ends dropped. But I saw him flash outside the tackle to try to take away the flat, and then I lost vision on him, so he just sunk back inside, and I missed that. And I only saw Hop like right there. So God made a good play. Um, and then to hold on to that, of course he did, you know, in between his legs. But, um, yeah, it sucks, but got to get better from it.